Okay, we're going to try and do this a little differently today than any of the scripted reviews I've done up to this point. I didn't know how to actually write a top five or top six, actually, of best Wolfenstein games, so I'm going to do this as more of a stream of consciousness thing rather than a traditional, you know, worst to best kind of countdown. And this is mostly just because I kind of lay out my thoughts towards the ranking and the actual review. It's like, Return to Castle Wolfenstein is going to be my number one pick. Like, it's not even a question. So, it seems kind of redundant to me that I would try to make a scripted countdown and try to add some semblance of suspense, even though it's really obvious, anyone who's seen any of the other videos I've made, what my countdown is going to be. So, I think I'm just going to have to, in this video, highlight three main points, which is just basic countdown, like basic ranking of the Wolfenstein games. Kind of, kind of go over my opinions towards the old blood and why I'm not going to review that, and then kind of just conclude with my rough thoughts on the new Colossus. Which it's going to give you its full written review, but I want to let it sink in for a bit and kind of take a break from Wolfenstein because I've been doing doing a lot of Wolfenstein stuff recently. So let's get on with the show. So if I had to say, like, obviously, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the best Wolfenstein game. If I had to pick a worst, just off the top of my head, I'm gonna have to, honestly I'm gonna have to say it's a tie between one other game and 3D. Now, this is kind of the cleaning house portion because I, in retrospect, I really do regret my reviews of Wolfenstein 3D and Return to Castle Wolfenstein, especially 3D because I just, I don't like being negative, I don't like, you know, not enjoying something, and I respect Wolfenstein 3D for what it really did, and how many first-person shooter tropes it created at the time, even though it's, you know, it's not actually the original first-person shooter, it's a, it's a common misconception, but I don't know, I, it just hasn't actually aged that well. It's aged better than I expected it would when I did my first replay of it, but it's repetitive, uh, and... I think the biggest thing to what excuse me. I think the biggest thing that makes it hard to go back to Wolfenstein 3D is Doom came out a little time after that, and in every sense of the word, Doom is a better game. Doom is just Wolfenstein 3D's basic concept of being a first-person shooter in an early one, and just completely blows it out of the water. And I can't look at Wolfenstein 3D in a world where you know every game after it. It doesn't exist so i respect it for what it was but it, i can understand why people really don't enjoy wolfenstein 3d and why it probably is the worst in the series it's not a bad game at all though and i i do stand by there's no bad wolfenstein game aside from i don't know like those weird uh bootleg missions that came out after came out after nocturnal missions and uh, spirit destiny Wh whoever made those that you know not in software though so yeah, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, uh, so far, I'd have to say 3D might be the worst one, but it is tied to someone else, and we'll get to that in a second, but, uh, I should probably point out, I didn't actually review The Old Blood, and there's a very specific reason why I never reviewed The Old Blood, despite the fact that's probably the game footage you'll be watching right now, is I have almost nothing to say on it. Uh, Wolfenstein The Old Blood is, uh, it just watch my New Order review, uh, specifically the gameplay bits, pretty much everything I said there, I I feel the same way as The Old Blood. It's, yeah, it's really good, uh, movement speed's a little slow for my taste, it's, uh, stealth's a little basic, but at the end of the day, it's a tight shooter, it's a very nice one, it's visceral, uh, kind of a nice mixture of stealth and combat, so, you know, I, I appreciate it. But, I don't know, like, uh, my review of the New Order is like 30 minutes, and like 20 of those are just about the gameplay. My review of the Old Blood would be like 3 minutes, because I only really have one major thing to say on the Old Blood is that... Uh, okay, uh, I have one thing that I actually want to say about the Old Blood. It's so much better paced than the New Order. If I had to give it one thing over the New Order, it's that my biggest issue with New Order was the gameplay to cutscene ratio. It's just, as I said in the reviews, like uh, every 10 to 15 minutes, like cutscene, cutscene, gameplay, gameplay, cutscene, gameplay, cutscene. You, you, you just watch the review for my taste, but 
every 10 15 minutes you're interrupted by a cutscene every time you think you're getting in the mood or like getting the swing of things starting to get a feel for the game you're interrupted and it really got on my nerves on the most recent playthrough for it and that's why the old blood because i haven't touched the old blood since it came out originally and playing it again for this review it was so refreshing to see wow um I am not getting interrupted every 10 minutes with a, you know, a pre-rendered cutscene or just like a little walking simulator section. It's really, really refreshing. And I kind of appreciate it in that regard because it feels almost like a love letter to everything Wolfenstein, just condensed into like this four hour package. Where, and it is much shorter than the New Order, but at this day and age, like on Steam, they're both kind of the same price. and. Yeah, it's, it's everything I liked in the New Order in terms of gameplay, and it fixes my biggest issue with gameplay pacing. So, without a doubt in my mind, it's the better of the two games. If you're only going to play one of the Machine Games Wolfenstein games, you know, spoiler alert for my new new uh, new Colossus opinions, uh, play The Old Blood. It's really solid, and it's my second favorite Wolfenstein. Like, it's, it's behind Return to Castle Wolfenstein, because I'm really biased in favor of that game, but... I, yeah, I appreciate this one. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, I've been putting it off for a little bit, a little bit here. My thoughts on the new Colossus. Okay, I should specify, I've only played the game once. I've done the single playthrough. I'm going to play it again soon, and then I'll play it a third time for their actual review, which is going to be later down the line. I... I want to let it sink in and maybe wait so I have something else to review alongside it because it's just good out of the blue reviewing New Colossus. I, it's not my thing because I respect people who can really get our game review out at the moment. They can really solid, solidify all their thoughts. I can't do that. I gotta let something sit with me before I really, really think, really come to an opinion on it. Because uh, with games, they're obviously longer than movies, so. You, you got more to take in and really, really come to a conclusion on. And the same thing with New Colossus is, honestly, it's one of the, the more I think about it, the less I like it. I think uh, this is, you know, I'll just get to the point. This is tied with 3D for my least favorite Wolfenstein game. I, It's not bad at all, but there's just a lot that this game does wrong that the New Order, you know, uh, the best way I can put it is that it's a game of really... Of a more negative polarization. Now, what do I mean by that? Excuse me being pretentious, but what I mean by that is everything I liked in the New Order is done a little better in terms of gameplay. Everything I didn't like in the New Order is significantly worse this time around. So it's kind of, it's a one step forward, two step back situation. I don't know, I'll, I'll go over the pros and cons. I like just kind of rough thoughts I've been having on it. Okay, so uh, what I liked, I like that it's faster than New Order. It runs on Intex 6, like the new Doom, so, you know, BJ runs around faster, you move faster. Uh, there's actually uh, some glory kills that are thrown in here, and I didn't see that coming, honestly. And, you know, some people might not think it's the same glory kill system. It is. It's just hammer a button, instant melee kill, and I think this game does glory kills better than Doom. And I'll say that is it's there for convenience, and because the player dies so fast on fire, it's not, like, gonna, and you don't get health from doing it, so, well, I think there's an upgrade for it, but I have to go over it again, but the point is, the game is designed around mashing the melee attack, and doing an instant melee kill, and getting a bunch of health, and just rinse and repeat, so, I think the way it was implemented, to where it's completely optional, and it's just there for user convenience, like, say you're reloading both your weapons, oh, an enemy pops up, there you go, glory kill. I like that. I like it a lot. And uh, speaking of that, just uh, around the exterior details, around the speed of the gameplay, uh, the music, I like the synth soundtrack a lot better this time around. I think it fits more with the visual themes that this game has going, specifically with how how very, very heavy, heavy uh, synthetic robotic everything is, which is a problem I actually have, is that if this game is supposed to take place like six months after the new order, why is everything so much more advanced? Like, that they have fucking Terminator, basically like T-800s in this game? Why? That, that seems so bizarre to add to the setting, but you know, I digress. 
but uh, the Sins soundtrack fits a lot better for this kind of kind of visual design they're going for. So I appreciate that. Uh, voice cast still fantastic. It's still the best voice cast I've ever really heard in a game like this. Uh, I think I prefer the New Order's voice delivery and voice acting, but you know that's just because I prefer the New Order in general over this game a fair bit actually. And it Tech Six, like, this is the one thing I would say is unanimously better than anything the New Colossus. Runs on a better engine. It looks better. It feels better to play. But I just prefer everything about it Tech Six to Tech Five. It's it is a significant jump in that regard. And I really like that. Uh, no, going back to the gameplay, I like that your movement and your abilities specifically are expanded upon. Yes, you still have the shitty perk system. Yes, you now have the upgrade system that I fucking hate in games like this. Really, really wish they just kept the upgrade system and weapon progression like they had in the new order. Thought that was really nice, but no, fuck it. Just throw all these upgrades around so you can break the system immediately and get really good guns really early on. So the entire game's a fucking cakewalk. Until, you know, until another thing, but we'll get to that. But uh, I like that... I like that because you're uh, because of the setup of the plot, you have a stomp move, uh, you have like, instant melee kills now, they're a lot faster, you run faster, uh, and halfway through the game you actually get this permanent upgrade to where you can uh, you can kind of crawl through small vents, uh, little spaces, you can get stilts, which are way more entertaining than I thought they were going to be because I picked them on accident. <laughs> And then you got kind of like a shoulder ram where you can just ch charge through walls and you know, kill enemies with it. Really cool. Really cool stuff. And I like that. It adds some replay value to where on the next playthrough, I can choose... Okay, so I saw stilts from the first playthrough. Okay, I'll choose the shoulder bars for the next one. And I'll see how the game plays a little differently in that regard. Really cool. like that a lot. Okay, let's get to what I don't like. The cutscene pacing is even worse like, this is genuinely atrocious i think okay for my first playthrough is like eight hours and if i had to put a number count on it like looking at a youtube cutscene compilation like kind of the time 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 frame of that with the optional conversations on the you know the submarine or u-boat excuse me i think it's like a 50 50 gameplay cutscene split and that's including those optional conversations that's atrocious. That is genuinely rough. And maybe it's my fault for not doing more of the more of the side quests with the with the, the Enigma machine. Because I didn't really do those for my first playthrough. I I don't know why a lot of those aren't just in the regular game. Like you go back to a location that you have no action sequence sequence in the game. During the Enigma code. I, I don't get that. Why would you not just expand on the main campaign with these? But, you know, whatever. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just gotta play the game again. But, for this is... It honestly it kind of has a Metal Gear Solid 4 vibe going on. To where there's so much cutscene in relation to the gameplay. It's... I'm confident it is a 50-50 split. It's ridiculous. And for a Wolfenstein game... Like... Id, you know, an id software property. It's not an id software game, it's an id property. And then coming off the heels of the old blood, which I think really fixed the pacing issues, I, this feels like a massive step back, like just doubling down on what I consider is the biggest failure of the New Order. Why? Everyone, like almost every fan of Wolfenstein complained about the cutscene pacing in the New Order. It's the most common complaint, so they double down on it. I don't understand. And uh, we'll get to uh, the difficulty thing. Uh, why I think as a running gun shooter, this doesn't actually work. It works less. It works even worse than the New Order in Old Blood. Is you die fast in this game. I, I've heard it said that the enemies in this game do not use uh, hit scan. They use projectile attacks. I wouldn't fucking know. It feels like hit scan. And the damage indicator is the worst I've seen in a very long time to where you can just die in the snap of a finger, like two seconds, without even knowing what direction it comes from. Because now, this is where it gets ridiculous, is in the new order, there's very clear spots to where uh, if you set off an alarm, enemies are going to spawn infinitely from. 
I have not seen that in the new Colossus. I have... I've heard other people complain about this too, where it can feel as if enemies are coming out of nowhere. They are just materializing out of thin fucking air. Just get that drop on you. If you're playing on the higher difficulties, like, God forbid you play on hard or higher in this game. Like, if you do Death Incarnate for your first run, oh my lord. But, I don't know. Like, that feels really... I don't want to say unfair or call artificial difficulty because it's a mean buzzword, but... It's it seems poorly designed, especially because they add movement speed. They you know make the melee more convenient. It's all about kind of streamlining the player's movements to make it more fluid, more fast, more punchy. But you take more damage under fire, so you end up having to play it slower anyway if you make the mistake of playing it on the harder difficulties to begin with. That seems completely contradictory. I have no idea why they chose to do this. Uh, the combat is expanded upon, like I said, but the stealth is basically the same. It plays exactly like it did in the New Order with the officer mechanic, which I still think is a good idea, but we'll get to, in a second, I'll say, I think it's very poorly implemented in certain sections here. And... It just feels like a missed opportunity that they don't do that much to really expand on the stealth. Like, I think the constrictor power-up is the only thing that can kind of be said as new, but... I mean, granted, you can make the argument that, well, it's not a stealth game, so why should they expand on it? Okay, well, here's my argument to that. Why even have it? Why even have the stealth elements anymore if the combat's the real meat of the game now? Like, they're really going, really going heavy into the actual gunplay. Why not just take the stealth out completely? Why not just make it a really old-school classic first-person shooter? Just complete running gun shit. Why not? Uh, and I think the arenas for the stealth in this game in particular are far too large. Like, uh, the new, I think what's a New Orleans section where it's basically like Escape from New York kind of thing. Uh, I think that in particular is there's a very segment. There's a segment there where you're in the, kind of an abandoned warehouse with two officers as usual, and it's like seven, it's like five or six floors, something like that, and. Because, obviously, you don't know which floor the officers are going to be on, and the, you know, little radar indicators are not going to tell you what floor they're going to be on. So, it's not really clear. They're just going to be running back and forth if you set that alarm off and having enemies spawn infinitely. And, again, as we established, if you play the game on hard, you'll die just at the snap of the fingers if they just get the drop on you for more than a second. It's, I don't know, it seems really bizarre to me. And... I almost recommend not even playing this game as a stealth game anymore, because I made that mistake and I just didn't enjoy it that much. Maybe that's why I'm so kind of mixed on it, is I try to play it with stealth and action mix. Maybe if I just go in guns blazing from an next playthrough, I won't have any of these issues, because stealth just feels half-baked and almost like a forced addition at this point. And... Uh, okay, it's a story-heavy game, like we said. I don't like the story. I really, really did not like the story this game told. It's the most basic, it's a very basic plot setup is, okay, uh, BJ and the Christ Circle, things are going a little rough for them, so they're gonna try and start meeting up with other resistance groups in America and trying to win back the United States, because, you know, big economic power, yada, yada, yada. So, I understand that. I think it's a really good setup. I think it had the potential to lead to a lot of really interesting arenas, and maybe we'll get to that in a fight. I'll try and get to that in a second if I remember, but I don't like the story this time around because it takes every twist, unnecessary twist and turn. It starts off on a contrivance, uh, which, okay, I'll just, uh, minor, minor spoilers for the beginning right here. Uh, Frau Engel is the villain, and she takes one of her daughters, like uh, her morbidly obese daughter, on her most important mission of her goddamn career, killing BJ Blazkowicz, the dude who like, shot Hitler until he died in 3D. Like, basically like American Superman. And the uh, most important mission of her career, she's going to kill him. She has him at her mercy. But she brought her daughter along and tried to turn it into some, like, conditioning thing to teach her to execute prisoners. And no shit, the daughter turns heel. And the daughter becomes, like, this kind of Chekhov's gun for the final chapter of the game, where she becomes vital to overtake in the Nazi shield helicarrier. Why? 
Why? I don't remember anything in the New Order feeling that contrived, where the entire story starts off with a complete nonsensical decision made by the main antagonist. And I would say Frau is really not as interesting this time around, because they try, I and mean, the voice actress is still fantastic. She's still Nina Franzek, if I pronounce that correctly. She's still phenomenal. I can't say that she does a very good job, well, not she, excuse me, that the character's as captivating as she was in the New Order. And I'll just give you an example is that, okay, how do they make you hate Frau when you first meet her? Here, uh, they make her kill someone in front of you by cutting her head off after berating her daughter for not killing that person, uh, takes the person's decapitated head and just rams it into BJ's face, like mwah, 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 making kissing sounds. Just... You know how they did it in the New Order? You sat down and you played a stupid card game with her. That's how they did it. That is so much more interesting. It's the nonchalance she had in that sequence. Here, it's like a 14 year old wrote this. Like, this is the kind of crap I would have wrote if I was gonna write an evil, super evil villain. Like, it's so beyond subtle, where it just, nothing, there's no violence in this game, and it's a very violent game in the narrative, there's a lot of, lot of quote unquote shocking moments, none of them hit home because it starts off on this note of complete absurdity, and nothing after that really made me bat an eye, and, well, not even on complete absurdity, because there's also that, you know, unnecessary feels sequence where he plays BJ and watch his dad abuse his mom and then forces him to kill his own dog, which, why? Why is that there? The entire BJ's dad arc is wrapped up around the halfway point in one of the most unsatisfying ways possible, to the point where I don't see why it's there. What does it add to BJ as a character to have this flashback where you see, oh, he was, his dad was super abusive. It's like, yeah, we knew that. We knew that. Why do we need to see it? Why not stick with the moment? Why not stick with the more interesting idea of him becoming a father? And his, you know, his concerns with his mortality and being a part of his children's lives. That's more interesting. Why didn't we do that? But, fuck me, I guess. I'm crazy. And, uh, let me pull up an interview here. Because there's an interview with, uh, I think, Jens Matthies. Uh, no, the game's narrative designer, Tommy, uh, Tordson Bjork. Where, uh, his exact quote on the game's crazy moments, you know, a uh, crazy moments, uh... We're never trying to contain ourselves in craziness levels. That's not really what the ultimate goal is, because the goal is just the story. As the story turns out to be crazy, that's sort of a side effect then, you know? Bull. Shit. That is a bold-faced lie if I have ever heard one. Because this game is designed entirely around shock moment after shock moment after shock moment. Like, to call it juvenile, I feel, is... Uh, it doesn't really get the idea across, but it's the one that will it, get it across to the most people. The game feels very juvenile, and I didn't have that issue with the New Order. This game does. This game feels as if a 14-year-old came up with the plot process. It's... It's silly. It's very silly, but it plays it... But it plays with over-the-top violence to such an absurd degree that whenever it tries to shock you with the violence, it doesn't, doesn't hit, because we've seen so much of it, it's portrayed in such a goofy, ridiculous light, that I can't take it seriously when it happens. It reminds me of Bulletstorm. It reminds me of Bulletstorm, when everyone's throwing around dick jokes constantly. They're trying to do this crude, crude juvenile humor, and then they try to make you feel bad for uh, the protagonist of that game, um, uh, Grayson Hunt. They try to make you genuinely feel bad for his alcoholism after constantly making dick jokes. And, I don't know. It, it tonally inconsistent does not begin to describe this game. To where uh, there's a bit that's pointed out in uh, better reviews than mine, which I'll link uh, two reviews in particular. Uh, one kind of positive, one kind of negative. And uh, Triple G Man Lives pointed out there's a conversation between Anya and BJ about kind of BJ's life and the role of his, you know, his coming children. And it's actually a pretty well, well written sequence, uh, very well voice acted on both parts. Uh, I forget the actors' names, uh, Brian Bloom and I forget Anya's. Very, very well done. And then it's interrupted by a poop joke. I do not even recall a poop joke in any other Wolfenstein, let alone any of the ones made by Machine Games. But there it is poop joke. And. 
the ending's anticlimactic. You just you kill Frau, big shock. It just and the ending kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. It feels inconclusive, and the fact that um, you know Death's Head is dead, Frau is dead, uh, another major Wolfenstein villain who you know you, you obviously are gonna know what I'm talking about, but I won't spoil for anyone trying to be in the clear of it. He's basically a non-entity as a villain at this point. So, who is going to be the antagonist for the third game in this planned trilogy? Did, did they think ahead? I don't know. I don't know where the game narratively is going to go from here, honestly. Because I, I did enjoy the New Order story, and I'm okay with the beats in this. I just... I don't understand where we're we gonna take it. Like this feels like you could end the new uh, the Wolfenstein new blank subseries right here. It's like okay, the fight will continue, but there's no real antagonist to be on the Nazi Empire, so there's no real face to associate it with. I don't know where we're gonna do. I don't know what Machine Games is gonna do from here. And you know, you know judging by the sales, I'm actually kind of kind of unsure if there's even gonna be a third game and. Honestly, if I have to be perfectly frank, I almost don't want there to be. I kind of want some fresh blood on the Wolfenstein series because, you know, uh, throughout the history of the first-person shooter games, no studio has made more than two of these games at a time, and this is the third for Machine Games. I think, you know, they've had their hands on the Wolfenstein series longer than any individual studio before this. I would really, really appreciate some fresh blood. I'd like to see someone else do Wolfenstein because I think with this game in particular, with how heavily futuristic it is in a lot of areas, even more so in the New Order, even though it takes place like almost immediately afterwards, it's kind of absurd actually. I think a lot of the Wolfenstein identity of basically being like you know the Great Escape and Indiana Jones, uh, you know some other things thrown into a big blender. I think that identity is kind of going away. Wolfenstein the New Order managed to keep it. The Old Blood perfected it as like this big love letter to every game that came before it. This one is, this is kind of pushing it. It doesn't feel like a Wolfenstein game a lot of the times. And I'm really concerned if that Machine Games has a third game and it just becomes not even Wolfenstein anymore. It just becomes the Machine Games presents the new blank where you might as well not even have Wolfenstein in the title. It, isn't really a Wolfenstein game beyond Nazis are there. I don't know. I I would have to actually do a full review to really articulate why I feel this is starting to lose that Wolfenstein identity. And I hopefully I'm proven wrong because at the end of the day, if Machine Games does have a full trilogy planned, obviously I want to see how they're going to want to conclude it. I, I was not crazy about the new Colossus. I'm not that much of a fan of it. Uh, I hate numerical scores, so I'm not gonna score it. But I think it is a, a you know an above average game, if not an average game at best, but a very polarized one. Uh, there's a lot of really good things here. There's a lot of really bad things, but uh, it's hard for me to recommend it. And honestly, it might be my least favorite of any of the Wolfenstein games. You know, the main Wolfenstein games, the you know the truly ones. Uh, so yeah, um, gonna I have to say that uh, if I had to do a you know a top five countdown, uh, number five for bottom going up, uh, it's tie between th uh, Wolfenstein 3D and the new Colossus. Don't really know which of the two I prefer. It's it's kind of hard, and again, this is a very very temporary list. I'd have to play the new Colossus a lot more to really really get a whole grasp on it. Uh, number four would be 2009. You know, flawed, but a lot of fun. I really enjoy myself with that game, surprisingly so. Number three is The New Order. Really good, but the pacing, you know, kills it a lot of the time on replays. Number two is The Old Blood. You know, uh, same things in The New Order, but fixes the pacing. So, you know, if you're going to play one of the machine games, Wolfenstein's, get this one. It's like 20 bucks right now. It's pretty good. Highly recommend it. And, of course, number one is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. All-time favorite. You know, big surprise. So, yeah, uh, I apologize for the informality of this. If uh, you don't like the format here, then this will be the last one of those. But if, you know, for recent releases, if people don't mind me just kind of 
kind of airing my thoughts in a flow of conscious fashion, then maybe I'll do more. Uh, there's a recent game that came called Dusk, I think I'd like to do a review of, uh, for plans of the future of the channel. Uh, I just sign off now for Andy Wolfenstein, it's just me shilling my own crap right now. Uh, probably Dusk, I think I want to do sometime down the line, but more importantly right now, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna take a break from first person shooters. I'm gonna do some cyberpunk games. Um, I've been getting into a lot of, a lot of cyberpunk games after some recent... Uh, recent media things I've consumed, I've been just kind of on in the mood for going on a binge, and my next few reviews are going to be you know point-click adventure games and you know and some RPGs here and there about about Cyberpunk. That's kind of just a broad label. So yeah, uh, it's gonna take some time to get a couple of those out. Uh, one I'm thinking of doing might take might take a month or if not two to get out. So pretty delayed, but if if you're interested in anything I'm doing here, I'll check that out, and thank you for listening.